uh, and Kyan. They're going to explain a little bit about what their roles are in school and kind of their goals for their roles. So welcome, guys. Hello, good morning. Thanks for having us. Ah, pleasure. My name is Yara Bali. I'm the head of inclusion here in Jabal Ali School, student head of inclusion. Mm -hmm. And well, we just aim to make this to oh okay <laughs> to build a really positive and supportive neurodivergent community here in Jabal Ali. So, what's your actual the role your role titles? Well, I'm head of inclusion. Oh, and I am the Deputy Head of Inclusion, and I think we're sort of here to upkeep and maintain that high level of inclusion that JAS already has and improve it in ways that we see fit. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, and do you bring other students on board with this, or is it just you two running it? Well, we have our Neurodivergence Club, which has been steadily growing. We've built a lovely community there of a bunch of different neurodivergent students. And I find the conversations we have are really insightful. And it's really great to just have that sense of community here. Amazing. So, um, so yeah, We also it. have uh, a lot of our friends are um, neurodivergent. We also collaborate with them and they'll give us suggestions and we'll talk to them, see how they feel about things and what they think that we should bring to the school because, well, Amazing. our role is to make it more inclusive for students, mm -hmm. so communicating with them does make it better in that sense. Well, I'd say a key part to your role then really, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. You're the student voice of the students in the school. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've spoken a lot before, Yara, you would class yourself as neurodivergent? Yes. Yes? I so have... what does it mean to you? And yes, what do you have? Yeah. I have ADHD, ASD, and like some form of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And what it really means to me is that everyone is different. It's just that some of our differences can be like classified mm -hmm. and they just make our brains a little spicy. Spicy. <laughs> and how do you think having, you know, being neurodivergent, how has that um, influenced your schooling? You know, how has it helped your schooling? Where is it, you know, has it been difficult at any point? Well, it's made me really stand out from people, okay. which means I'm usually like the first hand up when the teacher asks a question or when there's an opportunity to participate. It's usually me and some other students. And also whenever there's an opportunity to make a change, I'm always really excited for it because I just absolutely love you know, getting involved in the school community. Fabulous. And I suppose, you know, with, you know, you know typical schools, you know, we all come to school and it, you know, we, we all have to do exams and there's lots of things we all have mm. to do the same. Do you feel that, you know, in your whole schooling, because now you're in year 11, you know, you've been in school for, quite, oh my goodness, year 12, sorry. <laughs> um, you have been in school for a long time. Mm -hmm. Have there been any points where, you know, it's been difficult for you? Yeah. Um, the pattern with a lot of neurodivergent youth is when you're younger, you tend to be classed as gifted and get really good grades, but as you grow up, that slowly drops off. Mm -hmm. and it can make you feel like you're not doing enough, like you're being lazy or something. Okay. And I found that really, that really had an impact on me. Mm -hmm. And recovering from that and sort of learning to achieve with my brain the way it is okay. has really helped me. So have you found ways that work for you? Yes. Okay. And have you ever been in a situation where someone hasn't really understood your, you know, your different ways of learning, and you've had a, you've had moments where you're like, mm, hang on a minute, you're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this happened a while back. I was talking to the teacher. I mentioned my ADHD, and the student who was standing behind me was like, wait, what? Just focus. There's no problem. And I was quite young. I went completely ballistic. I basically shouted in the middle of the class, just tell someone with diabetes to make their own insulin. Mm. And my brain isn't making the chemicals it needs. Okay. And obviously, I wouldn't handle it the same way. I was going to say, how would you now, as obviously you're older, maturity mm -hmm. kicks in as well, and there is a lot more understanding about neurodiversity. Yes. How would you approach somebody um, that doesn't quite understand what that means and how people learn? Well, I would come from a place of trying to just like help them understand because mm -hmm. they probably weren't educated about it and probably be a lot gentler about it instead of shouting in the middle of the class. And do you feel you've got a voice to say to teachers, actually, this is what I need and this is how this, I work yes. better doing this? I feel very empowered. I find that I'm very good at communicating with others mm -hmm. and that my strengths are really when I use that voice. Amazing. Perfect. Um, and kind of for both of you, because obviously you're working a team, you mentioned you've got lots of friends who are neuro neurodivergent. How do you think schools can help children 
in a, in a mainstream school? How can, um, how can we better prepare students? What can we do to help? Um, I think at first it's important to keep an open mind, not just, not just for schools, but also in general, you know, like mm -hmm. um, as a child, I wasn't really educated in uh, neurodiversity. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it's obviously a new thing for me. I've learned a lot since my time moving here. Mm -hmm mainly thanks to Yara and my group of friends. So I'd say, to begin, just keep an open mind and get to know these people. Don't, don't sort of... Cast them out? Yeah, don't, don't make them what their diagnosis is. Get to know them on a personal level, see mm -hmm. what works for them. Because, like we've said, neurodiver neurodiversity, everyone's different. And obviously everyone works in a different way. So it's important to make sure that everyone's sort of understood for themselves, not just for their diagnosis. Ah, so the actual individual, you know, bits to them, because like you say, everybody's different. So you may be autistic, but I'm sure you've got maybe other friends who may be autistic who are very different, um, very different um, things that they need help with. So you're not, you're not the same as somebody else with autism or ADHD? Yeah, I'm not. Everyone has their different strengths and the places where they need to work on or the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. For me, my strengths is definitely my ability to communicate, but I won't be able to pick up on a lot of like social intricacies mm -hmm. and noise and ugh, noise, I, I hate so. it. So there's learning about the, the topic as a whole. So learning about what ADHD is. For example, we're just picking the same things or learning about what dyslexia is, but then it's getting to know the person as an individual yes, and yes. finding out what works for them. Mm -hmm. If you've met one person with autism, you really have just met one person with autism. Okay. It is a very yeah. wide spectrum. Exactly, Same thing. at the end of the day, it is a spectrum. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing with ADHD, dyslexia, everyone's brains works differently. And... What have you done? So you kind of like took the lead on Neurodiversity Month and it was the first time in your role. So of course that will grow as the years goes on. But what kind of things did you do to spread that message of understanding? So talk well, us through the things you did in we've school. We've got a little um, neurodiversity library that yeah. we're working on. We've mm -hmm. got a club. We've done some stuff in the you don't call them homerooms, you call them tutor groups. Tutor groups, yeah. Tutor groups. <laughs> We've got some stuff done in the tutor groups. It's mostly been just about educating and introducing the message and also just trying to build community within the neurodivergent people here at Jess. Mm -hmm. And you did the... Yes, and through that we've also done assemblies with all years from 1 to 11. Mm -hmm. And that was just about sort of educating them in yeah. the different types of neurodivergent... I keep, I keep saying neurodivergency, that's not the word, neurodiversity. So educating them in what they are basically, like different conditions. Yeah. And through that then suggesting ways which they could um, help and support students who have a condition. Yeah, definitely. And I think it was really good that you picked up on, only it was you as students, was, was a much bigger voice than kind of, you know, teachers getting up and doing it or talkers even coming in or speakers coming in to do it. It was great, it was from students. And also you picked up on loads of people outside in the community, celebrities and things like that, that also, they, like other people, like Billie Eilish, you know, that maybe they didn't know that they also, you know, maybe have struggled in school or society. So I think it was great. And you hit the entire school with those um, assemblies. Yeah, and I think we had a nice message with those assemblies mm. that regardless of conditions, it's not a bad thing. Mm. It's never a bad thing. Yes, there may be some limitations, but it's not going to stop you from achieving. Amazing, I like, like that message. And those celebrities are perfect examples of people who have achieved so much yeah. despite having a condition. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope to grow that next year. And you mentioned the library. So what's the aim of the libraries? Well, we just want to have a nice unified place where people can go, you know, just in their off time if they're a bit bored, like fidget, read some books, mm -hmm. just educate themselves at their own level, at their own pace. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I'd say it's probably a good point to put out that the PTA actually helped us get some money for that. We've ordered all of our, I know, lots of mosquitoes. I, I We've caught it. We've ordered all of our books. So there'll be books in each of the receptions. 
There'll be um, storybooks for children to read. There'll be books for adults with, you know, things that they can be doing at home with their children. Fidget toys, because we mm -hmm. do have lots of visitors. So if we have a um, neurodivergent child coming for an assessment, then they can be calm. A really nice welcoming area. So yes. we'll hopefully have them up, up and running very soon. And um, I think the library will definitely have an effect because I remember when I was new to the school, uh, my first day actually, my parents were late picking me up mm -hmm. uh, due to like traffic or something. So I found myself in reception, like reading the books that were on offer. They were like past yearbooks and things. Mm -hmm. So obviously, had they been there, I'd have had a look and I'd have picked up a book or two and I've mm. had, and potentially have learned something for it. So just having them there yeah. and having the opportunity to learn from them really is going to have an impact because there will be the odd person who picks up a book every now and again. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Well, I like to believe that more than just the odd person picks up a book. <laughs> <laughs> Reading is important. Yes. Read books in general. In general, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, and kind of going forward, obviously you're going to carry on with this role next year. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think kind of, you know, schools or communities, what are the, sh the greatest strength that a neurodivergent individual can bring to the community? It's very idiosyncratic. It's all very, what do you bring? I bring my excellent, um, like, brain fog. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My brain fog isn't what's excellent. Um, I was going to say public speaking abilities. Very good. But you've done the assembly. Just public speak yes. speaking was excellent. And my improvisational skills. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, someone might have some very good knowledge. They might be um, really great on the spot, really great planner, great organizer. Mm -hmm. People all have these individual skills, and it's honestly just really awesome when we all work together. And from your friends, can you pick out some other things that they bring, their qualities they bring? Um, from friends, my friends personally, they, they've been very good at educating me mm -hmm. as someone who doesn't have a neuro, neuro, what is the word? neurodivergent condition. Okay. So as a neurotypical, I've been educated by my friends in, and they may, they, I've done research into different conditions to try mm -hmm. and learn myself. Mm -hmm. to, it was to prepare myself for the assemblies. Yeah. But they've taught me so much more about what it means to be neurodivergent and mm -hmm. different things that come with the condition. Like for example, uh, with ADHD, I know that something called body doubling can help um, get things done, which means just having someone there whilst you're doing something. I had no clue. Tell me a bit would... more about that then. So basically it, oh, right. yeah, cool, so <laughs> yeah, cool. So what I'll do when I'm at home, I'll literally just put on a call with someone else and we'll just study at the same time. Okay. So just having someone else doing something at the same time just creates a good environment for you and just gets you into the mindset. Also, it helps with like the motivation because something that isn't really understood is people with ADHD can often struggle to gain motivation. Your brain just won't make the dopamine to get you to do the task. Mm -hmm. You'll want to do the task, but it's like just try, can't get there. you just can't get yeah. there. Yeah. And so it really helps just bridge that dopamine gap. Okay, amazing. Yeah, so I'll often have like uh, a friend of mine with ADHD and they'll be like, oh, can you body double me whilst I do this? That'll mean Ooh. it can be something as simple as I'm sat with them whilst they're doing a bit of revision or I'm, re or I'm revising myself with them. It just means that they're not alone in what they're doing and they've got someone wet there with them, which okay. will give them the motivation. Amazing. What other strengths have you seen? that maybe you, that we might not always have, like, you know, maybe we are self-motivated in that, but you've seen other strength, you know, we often all talk about dyslexic, those with dyslexia who think outside the box and all those sorts of things. So, is there any other strength that you've seen that you're like, oh, that, yeah, I didn't know that. I feel um, people with uh, a neurodivergent condition, they always bring like a different perspective to something. Okay. So, um, I don't know, I might be thinking of a problem, they might be thinking of it another way, and there's always a different solution. Mm. And yeah, I found that's a massive strength that they've brought, uh, not they, but yeah. that, that gets brought by yeah. neurodivergent people. They always have a different perspective on things. Oh, amazing. And kind of last question, really. Um, what, what advice would you give to, you know, anybody at school who may be thinking, oh, no, why can't I do that? Or I'm really struggling in maths, or I'm really struggling to make friends, or, so that's the first part of the question, and then secondly, you know, children that have just been maybe diagnosed, or um, what kind of advice would you give having kind of 
gone through many years of finding your way? I'm going to start with the second question because I forgot yeah. what the first one is. I will come back to the first point. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If you've just been diagnosed, mm. keep in mind that you just learn, take it slow at first, and know that just knowing doesn't mean that everything's suddenly going to be fixed. After I got diagnosed and I learned about it a little bit, I started to get really frustrated because like, I have all these coping mechanisms now. I have yeah. all these techniques. Why am I not studying at like... This, the same way that mm -hmm. like my neurotypical peers are. Why can't I get all of this work done at the same pace? You just got to continue to have that patience with yourself and understand that even if you know you're different, you're still different and there's nothing you can do to really fix that. Not that you really should be fixed. No, absolutely not. No. Sorry, Karen, did you want to? And um, I think with the first question being, it was to do with, um, say, if you're struggling with... Yeah, if you feel like you're struggling in class or there's, you know, there's, you've just got questions yourself. I think the first thing, just go to someone, see whether someone you're comfortable with or mm. someone with the condition that you have or think you may have. Mm. So just so that you can sort of get a grasp and see whether you can understand a bit more. Because yeah. there's nothing worse than being like in the dark about something that you're not sure about. So mm -hmm. I think step one is always to reach out to someone that you trust to see whether they can give you their perspective on it or tell you some things that you may not know, mm -hmm. which could help you feel better and more comfortable with yourself about these things. Amazing. So it's kind of talking is really important. And then maybe, you know, finding your voice and being able to advocate for yourself as well. Yes. Perfect. And then, you know, obviously educating the teachers around you, because as you say, what's really important is what works for you may not work for somebody else. Yes. And it's important to dig down into those individual things that work. And one more thing I want to know is that yeah. knowledge is power. If mm -hmm. you get a diagnosis, don't just stop there. Do research, like watch YouTube videos on it, read a book or something. Knowledge is really power. There are other people who are like you, who have gone through the same things as you, and they have found solutions they found ways to help themselves you don't need to discover everything yourself there are others out there oh i think that's a really nice way to finish and and ultimately if they want to come and talk to you you're in school yeah and is it okay if i put a little plug for our neurodiversity club absolutely <laughs> um so we've got a neurodiversity club it is on wednesday lunchtimes in miss scott's room do you know the name of that room um, yes. I don't. I, corridor. Yeah, so that. it's the <laughs> yeah uh, the inclusion room in the maths <laughs> corridor. So you're well, uh, you're welcome. Bring your lunches. We usually bring snacks. Bring snacks. <laughs> we usually have. Uh, we usually just chill and talk about things and discuss um, different conditions that everyone has and what they've been going through recently. So it's just a safe space. And I'd also like to point out, it's not just for people with. Mm -hmm. neurodivergent conditions it's for anyone to come and learn because you know there's we're in school we're here yeah. to learn so why not yeah absolutely and the forward aim is that we will bring be bringing something very similar maybe in a slightly different way um set up to primary as well in the in the new year mm. so we'll go for that and it might not be you guys because different lunch times but yeah. it's worked so well in secondary just having that um starting that this month that we would like to move on forward with that is there anything else you would like to say about your roles or anything you would like i thought your last message was you know knowledge is power was really nice but if there's nothing else to say i um, oh. I mean, I'd just like to say that I'm proud to represent the school um, in this department and I think that Yara and I will go and uh, do our best to represent the school in the way that we think it should. Yeah. Um, this is more for the students. If you think you're neurodivergent or you're really struggling, there, there are reasons for this. It's not your fault. If you're trying your best, then it's not your fault if you just can't get it done. Knowledge is power. Learn what you can. Do your best. Don't beat yourself up. Well, thank you guys for taking the time out and for putting yourself live on YouTube to talk about your role and how to help other students. And I'm sure we'll have a, another catch up in the future. Brilliant. Thank you for thank having you us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.